The classic physique competition is just around the corner, and the entire internet is wondering if Chris Bumstead will win the title for the sixth time. In this video, I want to discuss why it might not be as easy for Seabum to reclaim the trophy this year as you might initially think. I'll not only compare him to his biggest rival at the moment, but also consider his current training and dieting approach. Will the Canadian return in his best shape ever, or will the hungry underdog finally rise to dethrone the king and shock the world of bodybuilding? More on that later. But to start things off, let's take a look not just at his diet and training, but also at the steroids Chris uses. The time frame of around five to six weeks out is usually when Seabum begins to cut and significantly lower his calorie intake. At this stage, he consumes around 2,700 calories, consisting of approximately 250 grams of carbs, 30 grams of fat, and 330 grams of protein. Additionally, he increases his training volume and cardio to boost his metabolism and really bring out the definition, aiming for a body fat percentage of around 5 to 6%. However, to reach that level, he also increases his PED intake during prep. So, which steroids does Seabum take? Although Chris admitted to using PEDs some time ago, in a video uploaded two years ago, he revealed the steroids he uses and how much he takes. However, we can't be sure if he's still using the same dosage or if he was entirely truthful. Seabum claimed that his stack only includes one drug, namely 200 milligrams of testosterone in the off season and 500 milligrams right before the Olympia. This claim might sound far-fetched for someone with his level of muscle maturity, but it's the only source of information we can rely on. So, who is his biggest competitor at the moment? You might think of Ramon Dino, and that's true. He has been Bumstead's strongest rival for the past three years. But now, there's a new challenger who might pose an even greater threat to Seabum's career. A man who managed to beat prime Ramon Dino at the Arnold Classic, the Dutch Oak, Wesley Vissers. Let's compare these two genetic freaks in various poses, starting with the mandatory classic pose, the front double biceps. In my opinion, right after a V-taper and a small waist, a great classic physique should have massive arms, and Wesley has arms like mountains. His peaks are probably the closest to Arnold Schwarzenegger's. Although Chris has fuller lats that insert lower, Wesley's lats are wider. Overall, I'd say Wesley beats Seabum in this pose. The second mandatory pose is the side chest, and this one is tougher to judge. Chris has that upper body width and really knows how to open up to showcase both his highly separated wide pecs. But when you look at Wesley, his chest could potentially be bigger. His arms and delts certainly are. Also, his legs don't look bad in the side poses. I would say Chris has more detail, but Wesley has a more impressive physique overall. I'm unsure who wins this one, so let's call it a tie. Now we come to Wesley's weakest pose, where Seabum absolutely dominates. The abs and thigh pose. Wesley's abs are more abs than obliques, while Chris's abs are full of detail and definition, with his lower lat insertions highlighting them even more. In conclusion, I'd say Chris Bumstead's chances of losing to Wesley Vissers aren't that low, considering Wesley may be a bigger threat than Ramon was in the past. It will be a tough and close competition, setting real obstacles in Seabum's path. There have also been other close competitions, some even rumored to be rigged in the IFBB's favor. If you're interested in that captivating topic, click the video about Arnold's controversial wins.